here with Nate28 and this is Crossbeats Production. So this tutorial is about parallel compression. Parallel compression basically all it is is you mixing the original signal with a compressed signal and trying to find a good mix ratio between the two. Uh, people I guess are a little bit confused about it and I, I'm pretty sure I remember when I was first starting out I was also probably a little bit confused about how it worked and what it was all about. Um, and um, I guess there's a couple of different ways that you can use parallel compression and especially in Studio One there's several different ways that you can use it um, using Studio One that you can't do in other DAWs but I'll just show you using the standard compressor which is the, um, the compressor that everybody should have if they have Studio One 3 and this compressor actually I don't know if it's in the Prime version, the free one, I'm not too sure but if you have the Pro version then it's in that um, so basically what I've done here is I've set up a mix ratio which is at 55, or sorry, 51.5% mix ratio and I've got auto gain function here so it's just uh, creating an automatic gain on the on the compressor. What I'm going to do is play out the um, source material there for you and show you what that sounds like and then explain to you the side compress, sorry, the parallel compression and uh, explain how that's uh, affected the track and and give you guys an understanding of how I approach this and why I used it in this particular track. So let me just play that out to you first and uh, then I'll, I'll explain that to you and go from there. Okay, so that's the source material that we're using it on and this is the actual track that I was just explaining and showing you right now. So let me just pin this to the, the screen here. So if you hit that little pin in the, the top right corner there, it actually pins it to um, to the screen on Studio One 3. Um, if it's not clicked and you click on something else, it disappears off the, um, the screen. So just so you know, that's one little tip. Um, but basically what I did here is I... I used the parallel compression feature within the plugin itself and I mixed it in with a 51.5% ratio. How I came up with that was basically just listening to the track and deciphering where I heard the transient and how I heard it affected and also how I guess the rest of the track sort of uh, gave width to the to the um, the track and things like that. So let me just play it without the um, the compression in there and play it with it on as well and, and you guys can hear the difference. Okay. So what I'm hearing in my studio is pretty much the the width of the the whirly. It's pretty much a um, a VST instrument that I'm using it on. So you know, this is like a Rhodes Keys. It's called Velvet, and it's by Air Instruments, um, and that's the kind of Rhodes Keys that I'm using. So I just put a wah feature on here, so it made it sound like that kind of that wah kind of sound with the <laughs> bad interpretation. Um, so it made that sound with the Rhodes keys and it's kind of like all over the, the stereo field. So if I was to put a spectrum meter on there, you could probably see that it's kind of a bit um, all over the place. Actually, I might just do that just for the sake of it. And um, I'm, I'm going to do another review more on these Tokyo Dawn plugins because they're actually really good. I'm so surprised that they're all free. Well, you can get free versions of most of the ones that they've got on there. And um, they're, they're pretty awesome. So, uh, whoa, wrong thing there. Uh, where are we? Phase meter. Okay, so this is the phase meter. It just shows you the phase of the track. As you can see, it's kind of all over the joint with the with the phase, but it's still in phase. But um, the reason why I showed you that is just because I wanted to show you how sometimes the compression can affect the way that the phase is acting as well. Uh, sometimes it can affect the way that the track sounds. 
uh, width wise and if it's definitely a wide track then it will it might make it sound even wider and might do other things to the track itself but um, what I listened for when I was using the parallel compression feature was I was listening as I said for the transient I was trying to hear how the transient was affected the first original I guess the first uh, kick of of that uh, instrument well the first transient not kick because it's not a kick at all but the first transient of the instrument you can kind of hear where the keys hit and that's the transient of the instrument so I listen for those type of things. I listen for the width of the track. I listen for how it sits within the mix as well, especially within the mix, because if it doesn't if it doesn't sit within the mix right, then obviously what you're doing isn't gonna you know be a benefit to you. Um, you know, approaching compression in the first place as well. Just as a tip with compression, as you can see here, it's only getting minus five dB of compression. I'm I'm doing a makeup gain of auto, so whatever it's making it up, it's equal to the the loss compression there. Um, the tip, I guess, with compression is too too much can be an issue, but sometimes too much can be creative. But just look around the type of source material that you're using. If it's drums, then it might be of a benefit to compress things a whole lot. If it's not drums and it's an instrument like this where a Rhodes keys, um, you probably don't want to compress it too much so you don't lose too much of the dynamic range. Dynamic range, all that is, is if you are imagining a ceiling up here, and the floor here so if you had those two there in between there the audio signal exists and um, it's basically the transient is allowed to uh, get to the ceiling and within that 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 dif difference in volume with the transients um, there is a certain dynamic range within that so with a compressor you're slowly crushing the the transient down to bring the level of the volume equal to the rest of the track um, I don't have a drawing right now to do on the on the video but um, just imagine uh, the track being slowly squashed down and that's what compression basically is doing. It's basically making the loud parts quieter and the quiet parts louder uh, in a sense. And if you think of the, you know, if you're whispering and you're to put a compressor on it and crank the compressor and put the makeup game back up, it would create an even volume for, for that, that loud loudness to come through with the compressor. Uh, but anyway, um, Again, back with the, the parallel compression there, it's it's just basically a tasteful feature that you can add into to audio tracks individually. Or in this case, what I've done here is I've put it on the master bus as well. This compressor basically is probably one of my more favorite compressors um, to use on a master bus because it just has this really good sound to it almost instantly as, you, as soon as you put it on there. Um, but it has a mix wet, wet dry feature there. So I've just put a 94% mix wet and dry it anyway so what i've done there to to do the mix there is i've just got the the ratio that you see set there and um the, the thresholds come down a bit so i'm not getting a whole lot of compression basically on the compressor there it's very minimal but it does give me that little bit extra attack that i wanted and i'm not losing it out on on the full compression if i'm using all wet um, so that's another feature you can use especially if you're using mixed bus compression uh, bus compression is definitely something where you want to use parallel compression if you want to make it tasteful and you want to regain the transients that you lost with throughout the compression there uh, so yeah i just hope you guys enjoyed this video if there's questions you have let me know in the comments otherwise give me a thumbs up remember to subscribe to the channel because it helps me out the more people that subscribe the more people that watch uh, the more and more tutorials i'm going to keep doing for you guys and hopefully i can teach you guys something as well if you don't already know these things but otherwise peace Thank you.